From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. We begin with a disturbing discovery. This morning, an employee found the remains of a young child inside of a duffel bag. Detectives are now working to piece together who the child was, what happened, and why. Good Monday evening, I'm Siafa Lewis. This child's identity, their gender, and how they died all remain unsolved tonight. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Josh Sanders spoke to neighbors who are understandably still in shock. It was down this alleyway where Philly police say workers in the area made that horrifying discovery. The fact that it's a, a child just makes me sick. It really does. Neighbor Stephen Tambon woke up Monday morning to Philadelphia investigators at his door and the news of what was found just steps from his home. They were asking me about my security camera, which faces at the crime scene. I didn't know if it had the footage that they were looking for, but then I realized that it had up to four months saved on it. So I did provide them with the, the entire uh, camera, light card. I was just like, here, take it. Whatever you can find, you can find. I hope that it, it helps. It does have night vision on it. In the alley, the remains of a severely decomposed body of a child stuffed inside a duffel bag on the 600 block of North 38th Street. Sadly, I thought it was just another shooting, and then when I started talking to people in the neighborhood, like, it's a three-year-old child, it's a five-year-old child, so it's just like, oh, man, it's a baby down there. Police believe the child is between four and seven years old. They have not said if it's a boy or girl. Almost every day I knock on the door, sit with a parent, cry with them, um, watch them break down, and it's the trauma. Abdul Karim Asalafi with the Philadelphia Anti-Drug, Anti-Violence Network works to help reduce drug abuse and violence among young people and their families. We don't see this every day. So to see that a, a young child was placed in a duffel bag and thrown away like trash, it, it somewhat haunts you. As police investigate, he says he will continue building bridges within the community in hopes of preventing future tragedies. And we take this home with us thinking about and how can we better this situation so something like this never happens again. Josh Sanders, CBS News, Philadelphia. Well, police sources tell CBS News Philadelphia that detectives are looking into whether this child could be four-year-old Damari Carter, who's been missing since December. The four-year-old was reported missing on December 30th by family members who hadn't seen him for weeks. According to investigators, his mother told family the child had been struck and killed by a car. Police could not find evidence to corroborate that claim. Officers searched his neighborhood for the boy but did not find his body. In January, his mother and her boyfriend were charged in the boy's death. A rapper from Philadelphia who often rapped about the gun violence in the city has become its latest victim. Derek Gant went by the name Fat G's. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Kerry Carrada spoke to Gant's relatives. The family says they just want to know why. They say he just released a song called No Gun Zone, and he was really trying to tackle the gun violence in the city. They also shared this photo with us just a little while ago. The family is devastated. They say Derek Gann, who performs under the name Fat G's, had a big smile, was always supportive, and was a friend and inspiration to many. Now, police say the shooting happened on Sunday night on the 1200 block of Taney Street. They say Gant was taken to Presbyterian Hospital after he was shot multiple times. Investigators say they have video of the shooting and it appears Gan had some sort of interaction with someone who was in a car before he was shot. His uncle spoke to us earlier. Now you have a whole family that's just broken. He, they took something away from us that was valuable. They took something away from my sister. This is the holiest month of Ramadan. He was Muslim. So we know that he's in paradise. But when it comes down to it, we still are left here to, in grief. Fat G's is also receiving support from Meek Mill, who posted uh, videos and messages on Instagram and X. The two collaborated on a song together. Outside of police headquarters, Kerry Carrado, CBS News, Philadelphia. We have new details this evening about a triple murder investigation which spans two states. Prosecutors in Pennsylvania say Andre Gordon Jr. was calculated in the murders of his stepmother, sister, and the mother of his children over the weekend. CBS Philadelphia reporter Nikki Dementri shares the latest on the investigation and how the community is helping one another. It's quiet outside of this Levittown home where a small memorial is building. A completely different scene than over the weekend. I believe this was planned 
carried out, orchestrated exactly as he planned, except for her, perhaps maybe he would have killed more. Prosecutors say inside the home in Edgewood Lane, 25 year old Taylor Daniel was shot and killed Saturday morning by the father of her children, Andre Gordon Jr. In newly filed court documents, prosecutors add Daniel's brother heard the two in an argument before gunshots rang out. Court paperwork also alleges the couple's two daughters witnessed it all. The Bucks County District Attorney adds Daniel's brother and mother tried to intervene. They were heroes. They fought him with uh, an axe handle and uh, a kitchen knife. But before killing the mother of his children, investigators say Gordon Jr. shot and killed his stepmother and 13-year-old sister at a home on Viewpoint Lane. Just before 9 a.m. Saturday, the affidavit details Gordon's father originally confronted his son at the front door. Not long after, prosecutors say ring video shows the 26-year-old shattering the front door glass with a rifle and forcing his way inside. I believe there were efforts to hunt down other members in the home but for circumstances, um, thankfully, they were spared. Tonight, Gordon Jr. is in Mercer County awaiting extradition back to Pennsylvania, facing dozens of charges between both states. He was picked up by authorities in Trenton after an hours-long barricade situation after he escaped there in a stolen car Saturday. People are hurting, you know. Treehouse Mid-Atlantic is a youth support group in Lower Bucks County. The organization meets weekly here at Restoration Church and at several schools in the Pensbury School District, including the middle school where the 13-year-old sister attended. Some of them had friends, you know, were friends of, of victims um, or related to victims. Both Treehouse and Restoration Church are working to provide care packages to teachers and first responders. The church is also offering grief services and counseling. I think over the next... Um, several weeks, we're going to have a lot more responses to people trying to process what happened. In Levittown, Nikki Dementry, CBS News, Philadelphia. A man from Philadelphia who was wrongfully convicted is now free after he was officially exonerated. The district attorney's office decided to drop all charges against Charles C.J. Rice, who spent nearly 13 years in prison for a shooting back in 2011. CBS Philadelphia reporter Ray Strickland has the details on the case and what went into his exoneration. Today, Charles C.J. Rice is officially a free man. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner announced his office is fully exonerating Rice, who was convicted of shooting three people in 2011. This is not something that would have ha happened under a prior administration. Krasner says his office is dropping all charges against him, claiming the evidence used against Rice at trial was weak. Rice was sentenced to 30 to 60 years in prison for the shooting in 2011 in South Philadelphia before the conviction was overturned by a judge more than 10 years later. Rice's defense attorney, Carl Schwartz, says the conviction ultimately came down to Rice's ineffective counsel, which was a court-appointed attorney. Schwartz says among the evidence was a theory that the shooting was retaliatory, which was unproven. That's because Rice was injured in a shooting days prior. Schwartz says it's alleged the suspect ran from the scene, but counsel never used his medical records as evidence. The jury would have correctly found that the physical activity of the perpetrator could not have been activity that Mr. Rice um, engaged in. That fact received national attention after CNN's Jake Tapper began reporting on the case. His father, Dr. Theodore Tapper, was Rice's pediatrician and treated his injuries. Dr. Tapper believed he was not behind the shooting. Neelam Sangvi with the Pennsylvania Innocence Project talked about what needs to be done to prevent what happened to Rice from happening to someone else. Training of everyone, defense lawyers, prosecutors, and investigators around tunnel vision and bias and attempting to eliminate those problems as much as possible so that we are engaged in a search for what actually happened. And Krasner says the DA's office chose not to pursue this case because they could not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Rice was their guy. Krasner says if the DA's office did choose to pursue this, they likely would have lost. Reporting in Philadelphia, Ray Strickland, CBS News, Philadelphia.